hello and thank you for watching Torrance City Cable. I'm Christine Lee. For the past 40 years, City Cable has provided one-of-a-kind programming for our Torrance residents, visitors, and business communities. We are grateful for your continued support and wanted to take you on a journey to where it all began. Over a span of several months, our team of producers dug through countless archived DVDs and unearthed some jewels. Here's a look back at the very first episodes of many of our shows. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the elections and the installations that follow are always moments of high drama in a free society. And tonight, uh, those moments are enhanced for the first time in our history these proceedings will be telecast live to viewers on City Cable Channel 22. The televised City Council meeting on Tuesday, March 13, 1984, marks the beginning of 40 years of City Cable broadcasts to the Torrance community. Many original shows make their debut on the channel during the four decades that follow. The first premieres the very next year, with one of the city's most popular outdoor events serving as the backdrop. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Homegrown. Here we are at the Torrance Certified Farmer's Market. We'd like you to stop on by here if you haven't already been here. It's a great place to shop for all the fruits and vegetables that you need at your home. Homegrown is a collaboration between City Cable and the Torrance Certified Farmer's Market. The show highlights what's in season at the market and provides tips for picking the best produce. You want to look for a smooth skin, okay? No, no soft spots, and you want to make sure they're firm and heavy for their size. That means they got a lot of juice. Look at that. Isn't that nice? The show eventually transitions into a new program showcasing home cooks from our own backyard. Welcome to Community Cooking. I'm Jerry Watkins, your community cook today. I'm going to show you a delicious way to prepare rhubarb by combining it with another fall fruit. I call this dessert apple rhubarb crisp. City Cable launches another show that year. Torrance Exchange spotlights various events in and around Torrance from a performance at the Torrance Civic Chorale to coverage of the city's submission in the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade. For Torrance, it marked the 31st time that the city was represented in the parade. This achievement was made possible by the dedication of the Torrance residents who volunteered their time. Torrance Exchange spawns a city cable program that shines a light on the community's elderly residents. Hi, seniors. This is Art Callen reporting for the Torrance Exchange Senior Scene. I will be reporting on senior activities taking place here in our fair city of Torrance. The show's first stop is a popular spot for our city's seniors, providing them with much-needed resources and plenty of fun. I understand you're one of the honchos here at the shuffleboard court at the Bartlett Center. No, I'm not saying I'm a honcho, but I might be a morale booster. I play some, uh, majority three, sometimes four times a week. Three and four times a you week. you got to get groceries once in a while. Oh, I know? see. Oh, that's great. Two new programs premiere in 1990, broadcasting Torrance events and news to city cable viewers. Hello, I'm Mark Geddes, and I'll be bringing you all the latest information on city activities and community events for the week of December 7th through the 13th. So let's see what's happening this week in Torrance. Torrance City Watch directly follows this week in Torrance, focusing on more in-depth storytelling. For the past year, this Torrance neighborhood, located off of Prairie Avenue, has been participating in an automated curbside refuse collection program. Automated collection is a state-of-the-art method of refuse pickup. City Cable turns its sights on local athletics when it premieres Sports Desk the following year. Hi, sports fans. Welcome to Knights Stadium on the Bishop Montgomery High School campus, where we, the Knights will be looking for their third straight win against no losses. And business is the topic for a program that debuts just a few years later. The show's host is someone who's quite familiar with the subject. Hello, I'm Jim Armstrong. Some of you may remember me as a past mayor of the city of Torrance, but I'm still around, and I'm here today to introduce a new program for City Cable 22. It's called Getting the Business in Torrance. Profiling the wide array of businesses in Torrance continues when the show updates its format and is rebranded as Common Sense. Almost 100 businesses here at the Chamber of Commerce's Business Expo at the Marriott Hotel. 
They're showing people what they have to offer. These businesses are representative of the many that make up the city of Torrance. Entertainment throughout the city shines on Spotlight Torrance, a bi-monthly program that begins airing in 1997. On that note, let's talk about music. According to Rolling Stone magazine, there are 200 albums that must be included to complete a true music library. The magazine lists them by decades starting with the 50s, but we're just going to go back 30 years and give you a few examples. Speaking of music, singing and dancing are at the forefront of the city's first employee variety show called Way Off Broadway. This weekend, Torrance begins covering the annual event in 1999. The performers say they enjoy doing the show with their co-workers. And they say knowing all ticket proceeds are going towards fighting cancer makes the experience even more worthwhile. It's very rare in life that you get to make a difference with what you do, with your passion. And with this event, not only is it a community building event with the rest of the employees in the city of Torrance, but it also goes to such a good cause. Those with a passion for arts and crafts get a show designed for them in 2005. Hi, I'm Tracy Metro, and welcome to Art Studio, the show where us crafty creatures get down and dirty. And community members who've left their mark on the city are profiled on Faces of Torrance. The show's first episode airs in 2008 and features a longtime city cable broadcaster. It's a voice and face familiar to so many Torrance residents. Art Callen, host of Senior Scene, doesn't just practice what he preaches. At 87 years old, he's as active as ever. From notable humans to man's best friend, Canine Corner makes its debut one year later. Hi, I'm Amy Lopez. And I'm Joe McDonald. Welcome to Canine Corner. Thanks for joining us. Whether you're a doggy lover like me. Or a new dog owner like me, you've tuned into the right show. There's no shortage of great food in Torrance, and it's made clear with its abundance of unique restaurants. City Cable launches a show in 2013, giving viewers a taste of what Torrance has to offer. Hey everyone, I'm Kirk Lines, and this is Taste of Torrance. Today, we're at Las Vegas Seafood Buffet. And just as the name says, the food and the variety of food, it's a showstopper. Let's go check this out. The city's clothing shops and boutiques are also on the menu when Taste of Torrance adds fashion and design to its lineup. I hope your stomachs are full because we're about to take a walk through Paris. Right here in the heart of downtown is a store called Les Unique Boutique. It has everything from vintage to collectible. So let's not waste any more time. Follow me. City Cable takes a giant leap and airs its first live news broadcast during the break at the City Council meeting on March 4th, 2014. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce and the Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce held their annual Black History Celebration. Reporter Julie Chan was at the Torrance Marriott to meet the remarkable people being honored at this event. I've been very, very fortunate over the years to have wonderful mentors, and I think that's what makes the difference for someone being able to have achievements in their life. The weekly broadcast airs on City Cable for the next six years. But with the world entering the pandemic, the show transitions into a daily broadcast on Monday, March 30th, 2020. Hello and welcome to COVID-19 Today, a new program we're launching to bring you daily updates on local impacts due to the coronavirus public health crisis. We hope you'll join us live every day at 4 p.m. and weekends at 2 p.m. COVID-19 Today continues its run throughout the trying times, and by January 2022, City Cable launches Weekends in Torrance, providing much-needed storytelling to its viewers while still maintaining social distancing. Miss Julie, here we are at your one-stop shop for mind, body, soul, but things are way different than they used to be. We're masked up six feet apart. How is this even possible in the beauty industry? Explain how your business has survived COVID-19. The country begins to open back up by the spring and City Cable combines Torrance News with stories from around the community on its next original program. Welcome to the first episode of Torrance Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's Monday, April 4th. We're excited to launch City Cable's newest program, highlighting the many events and newsworthy items happening right here in our city and around the LA region. The show airs live four days a week until the end of 2023 when it signs off for the final time. So thank you so much for inviting us into your homes and for making us a part of your community. That's our show for today. On behalf of our entire staff here at Torrance City Cable, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.
We hope you enjoyed this quick look back at some of your favorite programs of the last 40 years. I'm Kirk Lines with Torrance City Cable. A large part of what sets City Cable apart is our ability to provide live programming, capturing priceless moments as they take place. From our iconic Armed Forces Day Parade to the Olympic torch run, we were there when you couldn't be to give you a front row seat. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's you probably know City Cable best from our live news broadcast, bringing you information you need to know. But there's a lot more to what we've covered live over the past 40 years. Um, it looks like we're, we're nearing the end of our evening here. The votes are almost tabulated. But well, most of the uh, precincts have reported in. You can see on your screen right now that, in fact, 56, all 56 precincts have been counted. I understand right now that Richard is ready to speak with someone over at the City Hall uh, Council Chambers right now. Let's see what Richard has for us. Richard? Michael, actually, I'm ready to speak with you and Kristen. Believe it or not, I have good news. Monitoring local politics, specifically elections, is one of the most important roles Torrance City Cable plays, keeping citizens in the know about who's vying to help run this city. One particular show asks citizens to call in and ask questions live. Stay tuned and call in your concerns right now. And in 2022, City Cable tried something new, live election coverage with reporters throughout the city. Special edition of Torrance Today. This is Torrance City Cable's special election day coverage. We'll keep an eye out for updates on District 3. Back to you in the studio, Christine. Thank you so much, Lauren. Now, this year's race has four candidates, as you said, running for one seat. Zooming in from their smartphones to deliver the latest results. And we continued that tradition in March of 2024, bringing you the election news you need in real time. They've been really busy tonight, but they let us stay here on our own. Quite nice. Another key role City Cable plays is to bring you live coverage of our annual Armed Forces Day Parade. With hundreds of entries and hours of fanfare, this is the nation's longest running military parade sponsored by any city. Keeping with the patriotic theme, City Cable often produced a live show for 4th of July festivities. You know, happy 4th of July to all of you. Uh, I, we came here first thing this morning and you never know who you'll see reporting from Wilson Park. Kim Edwards, I believe, is out there somewhere right now interviewing people even as we speak. Kim, glad you're here with us. It's Michael and Jeannie. Boy, is it a great day out here at Wilson Park or what? And there are those rare once-in-a-lifetime events that Torrance City Cable broadcasts for all to remember. Hi everybody, this is Dan Halliday. We're out here in front of the City Hall, the Civic Center here with John Jones in front of uh, Torrance Boulevard here waiting for the, uh, the big event. Joe Quinones will be carrying the torch across Torrance Boulevard en route to the uh, Olympic Stadium. Here he goes, Joe Quinones carrying the Olympic torch down Torrance Boulevard. This is exciting. This is everything we've all been waiting for. Joe Quinones as the Olympic torch is on its way en route to the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my happy privilege to present to you the carrier of the torch. The Joe Quinones. from grand events to local arts programs. City Cable hosts shared a wide array of interesting stories and events. Welcome to the Cultural Arts Center Live. This program is designed to keep you informed of all upcoming events happening here at Torrance's brand new Cultural Arts Center. And there are times when important topics take center stage, providing residents with crucial information for their daily lives. Hello and welcome to COVID-19 Today, a new program we're launching to bring you daily updates on local impacts due to the coronavirus public health crisis. Our show, COVID-19 Today, began in March of 2020, becoming City Cable's first daily live news show. It aired seven days a week for months before tapering down to four days a week. COVID-19 Today aired its final episode on March 24th, 2022. 
After nearly two years of COVID-19 today, this daily live news program is coming to an end today. We're so grateful for your viewership during these trying times and are excited to return with a new show beginning next month. This brings us back to our most recent show called Torrance Today, which brought local news from and for our community through the end of 2023. So thank you so much for inviting us into your homes and for making us a part of your community. Those are just some of the many live voices, faces, and shows we've provided over the last four decades. Calm and reassuring, energized and relevant, helping Torrance residents live their best lives. Thank you for watching. I'm Kim Edwards with Torrance City Cable. As storytellers, we have been there over the decades for life's big and small moments. And this one in particular was a moment none of us will ever forget. September 11th, 2001 is a day that is etched in many of our memories. Now it's only becoming a day when we're tasked with teaching the younger generations about what happened. City Cable's archives take us back to the year 2001, when just hours after the tragic events, Mayor D. Hardison had the difficult job of leading the Torrance City Council meeting. Today has been a sad day for this country. We've watched with horror the terrorist acts that have killed and injured an untold number of innocent civilians and public safety personnel. And we extend our condolences to all of the families who have lost loved ones today. In the coming days, a small group of our local heroes from the Torrance Fire Department traveled to the East Coast to provide much needed help. During that period of time, we, the fire department, and with the help of our community, raised hundred and over $100,000 to directly donate to the widows and orphans of FDNY. About 25 of us went back to New York and actually assisted a little bit with digging out uh, the pile. And then we actually hosted a fire station in Harlem and bought them dinner and allowed them to have some relief during that very obviously stressful period of time. Back home, city leaders held a vigil, bringing together a large crowd. We'd like to give our condolence to all the people, especially the firefighters who risk their lives uh, every day, that uh, God will help them and their families during this time of suffering. And we salute you, President Bush, for being a good president, and may God help you in it, whatever you decide to do. About a month after the 9-11 attacks, City Cable reported on the division that began to spread across the country. Muslim students here have felt racial tension firsthand. Female students who wear the traditional scarf have said they feel as if they are walking targets. Others say that they are often asked why they wear their scarves and reply it's part of their religious duty. City officials made it clear that discrimination would not be tolerated. In the days ahead, I would ask our Torrance family to remember that we're a very culturally diverse community and we're proud of that diversity. Please do not place unfair blame on individuals of another culture for the horrible acts that have occurred today. This is a strong country and we know, and I know that we will find the strength to face the days ahead. What also took place during this time, however, were acts of kindness. We decided that because this is really community building, gives the community a chance to heal, do something positive, we're all looking to do something to feel better um, uh, about what's been going on. And uh, this is a great opportunity for people to get involved and, and really get closer to their families and, and really start the healing process. I'd like to see it bring us all together. Uh, to realize that this country faced a, a very large disaster. The firefighter family the, and the police department families faced a very terrible disaster. And the world in the country needs to understand that we need to stick together on this and work together on this and, and, and support each other on this. Similar kind acts would continue. Here's a look at 20 years later, when a couple of teenagers began a flag planting effort at Seaside Heroes Park, placing a flag for every life lost. To have people who were alive at the time come up to me and have these conversations, these really serious conversations about where they were and how it affected them and how it affected the country. I cried so many times. It like rocked my foundation. 
a small group also gathers just a couple of miles away at Hickory Park to remember Torrance resident John Wenkes, who was on American Airlines Flight 11. John had just turned 46 the week before. He would be 66 today. Real hard to lose somebody that way. You never think it could happen to you, you know. But uh, it did. Wenka's family, friends, and neighbors planted a tree and installed this memory bench to remember their loved one at his favorite park so they can stop by from time to time and just sit and remember. John was a type, you know, my mom was in the hospital. He'd go visit her and he called us his California family, you know. My brother just passed away recently also. And uh, I know he's with my brother now. They're back together as buddies. The Torrance Fire Department resumed its annual tradition of observing the tragic day outside Fire Station 1. Because it's something that will never go away, and we have to remember it. We have to remember the sacrifices that people did. They know that they were going into uh, a place of great danger, but that's what they're due. They have the duty to serve. And so that's why those folks went in and, and, and try to save people. Fire Chief Dumay says many on his team were not in the fire service in 2001, and he hopes by observing this day in this way, they can learn and truly honor those that we lost. I'm Cindy Aguilera with Torrance City Cable. And on a more positive note, the city has been and continues to thrive largely thanks to its robust and ever-changing business community. From small mom and pops to high-tech giants, we've been there to cover it all. From mom and pop shops to large employers and shopping centers, Torrance, California is home to more than 10,000 businesses, many of them profiled by Torrance City Cable, first on a show called Torrance Exchange. Welcome to the first Torrance Exchange of 1985, coming to you from City Cable 22. The Torrance Exchange is the city news magazine that brings you the best of the events and services offered by the city of Torrance. We've covered lots of grand openings, such as this one at Del Amo Fashion Center, featuring some well-known characters from Warner Brothers Studios. We're bringing fun, we're bringing excitement. Not everyone can make it to Hollywood, so we're bringing a piece of Hollywood to them. Hello, I'm Kathy Keene, and welcome to this month's Torrance Exchange. While our storytellers changed over time, City Cable's dedication to local business profiles remained. That includes the business of the city itself, sharing information residents may need as they go about their daily lives. Water is a crucial resource in our daily lives, and the Torrance Water Department is well aware of its importance. What is the department actually trying to achieve with these capital improvement projects? Well, what you saw in that segment there was one of our water main replacement programs, and we've had a very active water main replacement program. Over From providing updates on the city's infrastructure to covering the AYSO National Championship Games. Torrance is the type of community that is virtually perfect for this type of activity. City Cable was there to capture it all. Here's an episode of Torrance Exchange in 1992 when then-Mayor Katie Geisert helped open the Torrance Crossroads Shopping Center, a big undertaking that began with a massive cleanup of the land, which used to be an oil reservoir. So you, when you consider that this beautiful shopping center has sprung where that contaminated soil once was, it's, it's very encouraging. I think it speaks well for the city. Hello and welcome to the holiday edition of Getting the Business in Torrance. I'm your host, Jim Armstrong. In 1995, the show got a new name, Getting the Business in Torrance, hosted by former mayor, Jim Armstrong. This holiday show was taped live at the Marriott Hotel and profiled three of the city's busiest shopping centers. The first place most holiday shoppers begin is at one of the world's largest shopping centers, the Del Amo Fashion Center. I like this mall because it's really big and they have nice stores. What used to be known as the Old Town Mall is now the Torrance Promenade. With popular discount retailers, 
And every now and again, we brought you an unusual business, such as Ostrich Farms Limited. Ostrich meat sold as an alternative to beef, leaner and lower in calories. It's a meat that is identical to beef in the flavor, in the taste, in the texture. There were times when a business had to pivot to remain viable, such as High Shear Technology Corporation, moving away from aerospace and toward a more practical invention. The Life Shear applies space technology to a more down-to-earth need, a life-saving device that can cut through metal. A major employer that came to stay is American Honda Motor Company, one of the city's largest private employers. No cars are made here, but the company's American headquarters is located at 1919 Torrance Boulevard. It's a place where respect for the individual leads the company culture. Respect for the individual means that I value you for the ideas you bring, for the uh, person you are, for the innovation. Uh, that you may be able to bring to uh, any concept or idea. In 1999, City Cable's business feature show underwent yet another change, becoming Common Sense. Ten years later, in 2009, our hosts still got exclusive behind-the-scenes interviews. This marks ExxonMobil's 80th year as part of the Torrance community, and we'll see what this global business is doing to stay competitive in an ever-changing and challenging worldwide industry. Safety is a constant concern for us. We're, we're, we're making gasoline here. Homegrown and internationally known, Pelican Products provides the design and manufacture of high-performance protective cases, temperature-controlled packaging, and advanced portable lighting systems. And it all started in a Torrance garage. You know, I could give you a, a, a big, long explanation, but the truth of the matter is it was just a big accident. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the company pivoted to make essential products for our first responders. Then President and CEO Philip Jory explained the efforts. A lot of people know of Pelican for our protective cases. We ended up doing millions of millions of dollars of protective cases for portable ventilators that were completely related to the COVID pandemic and the need for respiratory equipment. And then we have a division called Pelican Biothermal, and in that division we specialize in temperature controlled packaging, and it's really for the pharmaceutical industry. So these are cases that are used to transport temperature sensitive pharmaceuticals like vaccines. Torrance is home base for many family businesses. Levy's department store, founded in 1923, passed from Sam Levy to his daughter Ella, who retired and closed the business in 1998. The department store may be gone, but the family business still thrives. I'm representing Levy Living Legacy. It is my husband's building that we managed together. It's, it was his great-grandfather's building. His great-grandfather came right actually before Torrance was founded and built the first department store in downtown Torrance. Meanwhile, Via Hermosa Florist on Cali Mayor near South High School is still going strong. 44 years of making people smile. And Torrance Bakery is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Owner Kirk Rosberg started with just 1,200 square feet and seven employees. Now he owns 20,000 square feet and has more than 100 employees. We also look for unique partnerships, such as the one between Polypeptide Group and Scholb Premium Ales. The two join forces to create a special beer to celebrate Polypeptide's expansion. A portion of each beer sold went toward funding local libraries. I'm so pleased that one of our favorite breweries, one of our favorite manufacturers got together and did this. Torrance is currently home to nearly a dozen local craft breweries and a beer run that lets you take a taste of each. <laughs> Cheers to all. And there you have it, a small sampling of just some of the businesses profiled by City Cable during the last four decades. Thank you for inviting us into your workplaces and your homes. I'm Kim Edwards with Torrance City Cable. 
These stories just scratch the surface of everything City Cable has covered over four decades. Now we are transitioning into telling stories outside your TV screen. If you haven't already, please connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube so you can catch the latest from the City of Torrance. There you can also share our stories and interact with us, letting us know which stories you love and sharing your thoughts. Thank you for your loyal viewership, and we look forward to sharing more priceless moments with you in the coming years.